To the music scene in Detroit. Detroit gospel scene. It's just like we're known for gospel music. Detroit is just that place. I apologize for having an affair. I want to dig into where I am. I want this to translate through my music. Grown in gospel. All new series premieres Thursday, March 16th on WE TV. So it, it's, it's my time now. I'm hanging out with Tasha Page Lockhart, one of the dopest, most amazing voices and, and really vibrant personalities I've come across in a very long time. She's starring in WeTV's new original series, Grown a Gospel. It premiered last week, Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern. So another episode. Yeah, we got episodes coming up. If you haven't caught up, make sure you do. But yeah, Tasha's in a little bit of a, a little bit of a pickle. You know, she's she's a mother, too. You know what I'm saying? If you and know, I'm a, grandmother her, now. I'm a grandmother now. She's a grandmother now as well. If you, it, I, I first got acquainted with you, Tasha, for, for Sunday Best. But since then, you've done some amazing music that I've absolutely loved. But yeah, she's trying to push her career forward. She's working on a new project. She's got some marriage kind of stuff going on. Lots to go. We just all in your business, sis. First of all, how are you? Because I can only imagine all that playing out on camera, how you've had to kind of work through that. <laughs> sis, I feel as good as I look. Okay. And she's I sharp, y'all. For those who can't see, let me tell you something. <laughs> She is sharp today. <laughs> I feel amazing. I, I'm, I am the happiest I've been in a long time. I feel great. Let me ask you this, because happiness is something that I think a lot of us have conversations around, but don't necessarily know how to achieve. And if so, um, in a way that's uh, substantiated, there's been a lot of conversations around mental health and wellness. And a lot of people talk about being happy. But part of the conversation also kind of drops off when we talk about how to get there. So for you, how did you get to your habit? Um, I'm glad you asked me that question. Uh, and thank you for uh, having me on here um, to speak with you. Yeah. Um, I got partly, and I think it was it's it's it comes in phases, and you got you gotta do the work. Yeah. So that's the project I'm actually working on. It's my new book that's gonna come out um in a couple of months, and it's called Do the Work or Live Like a Fraud. Mm. And I literally was sitting in in a uh, mastermind. Um, com uh, conference and the Holy Spirit gave me that title because that's what I've been doing since 2021 from therapy to counseling to delivering services to asking the hard questions to researching my family okay I know I'm not the first person that's ever done this I know I'm not the first person that's ever had uh, bad relationships and can't hardly pick a man I'm not the first person that <laughs> dealt with drug addiction I'm not the first yeah. person that so okay who, who in my family just ain't saint speaking up Ooh. asking them questions. This is how you break generational curses. And then yeah. sitting my sons down and saying, okay, let me talk to y'all about something. Because I'm not going to let y'all figure this out on y'all own. Mm. So that's the process that got me to, you know, being able to say, I've got enough courage to really, because I want to tell the truth about my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I feel so free. I can't even explain it. To be able to tell the truth about your life with no regrets, no shame, no guilt. This is me. Love me or hate me. Just watch the show. Like, just watch it. And you're going to see. Like, you, if there's no way that God can give you the release to do something and he not make it into a successful plan. Yeah. Like, God's writing the success story. I didn't give myself this. I didn't give myself this vision. I didn't wake up one day and say, I want to be well-known. I want to be famous. And I want to go on a reality show. And this fell in my lap. Mm. So if God led me to this, he's definitely graced me to do it. So I hope oh. I answered your question. It was kind of long, but no, that was this is a conversation, sis. So I'm good. I, I appreciate it. And I know that this is this is first of all helping me, but I also know it's helping people that are listening. And, and you talk about God leading you. And I just want to know too, what led you to a place where you surrendered enough to be self-aware and go through that process? Because that's not easy to really sit with yourself and say, hmm. Something's something's wrong. I'm not necessarily sure exactly what they what it is, where it came from necessarily, but I need to start doing the work, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. to get through this and get on the other side of it and and also be able to serve because you're still a minister. Like this is this is what yeah. it is. So there's a it's not like you're not like and I don't want to say normal people. I need y'all to hear me correctly. There's a call in your life that goes beyond just you. Like a mm -hmm. lot of people pull on you all the time. So that's exhausting in itself. But then to be willing to be more exhausted by the process of cleansing and being self-aware, like what drove you to a place where you're like, all right, that's it. I need I need to know me, the good, the bad and the ugly and deal with it right now. I had gotten to a place where I have felt like I had mastered getting it wrong. 
And there was hmm. nothing left to do but get it right now. I had hit so many brick walls, you know, being married twice. It's just like, come on, Tosh. You know what I mean? Like, I'll be I'll be 40 years old, March 21st. I got a big birthday coming up. And I'm like, you can't keep going around this bush like this. You can't keep, you got to get it right. You know yeah. what I mean? And so I just got tired of me. I got tired of myself. I got tired of making excuses. I got tired of placing the blame. Um, and and it's, it's, that's not giving, that's not letting people off the hook. You know, people. You have yep. to hold people accountable for the things that they do, but I can't let you. I can't let you have power over me. Right. So me saying, "Yeah, you were wrong," and yeah, some of my responses may have been justified. Like I, sh- I should have slapped the fool out of you, <laughs> but you know what? I didn't. <laughs> you know, I, I probably should be locked away right now because of what you did. But you, but you know what? Grace is given because grace is needed, and so yeah. I know I'm going to need grace from somebody one day. I know I'm going to need somebody to just be like, you know what, Tosh, you're having a rough day. I, yeah. I get it. So I have to extend that same grace to other people. Um, but I just, I don't live with regrets. I really don't. I don't I don't have anything that I could say. If I could go back, I would do this differently because cause if I change one thing, the whole story changes. Yeah, yeah. Then I don't end up here talking about being on WeTV Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern on Standard now. Time Come on now. over here with you. Come on now. Come on now. Mm, and we're gonna get to it but i do want to ask you um <laughs> because I, there's a lot of women looking for love i'm one of them you know and love is a beautiful thing but i i, I will ask you kind of a twofold question number okay. one as you reflect on you know your married life was were there voids or a void that you were trying to fill um in getting married and also as you look at yourself now a more whole more healed person uh what's the biggest lesson that those being married taught you being married this, this second time taught me to not make emotional decisions out of my loneliness. Woo! Somebody not just got set free long, right there. Not <laughs> wanting to experience the highs of my career by myself, that mm. need for companionship. You know, last night we just, I just, we just had a big premiere. The other night we had a yeah. big premiere of the reality show and it's like you know experiencing that and not being able to come home to say oh my god babe wasn't i just i I love love i'm one of those mushy like i love public (laughs) affection the whole thing of it and so because i know i'm that way i'm like god please and i i went ahead of god and going ahead of god almost cost me my life Mm. i went on a four-year journey depressed verbally abused you know in so many different situations and circumstances that caused me to do things that I thought I was free from. So it, it ruffled some stuff. It, it, it set off an alarm. And I'm mm. like, wait a minute, I thought I overcame this. Mm. Why, why I'm taking 12 shots of Casamigos every day? And I'm going around testifying, talking about I'm delivered. How, how I found myself as a bishop's wife Drinking 12 shots of Casamigos every day. I was going to the liquor store. They knew me by my name. I was buying the boxes of shots. They come in boxes. Every day. Just to cope with the situation I was in. I didn't know no other way to handle it. And we can say, oh no, call on the name of Jesus. I I was doing that and nothing was happening. Mm. Keep it and the reason why nothing was happening is because he didn't tell me to marry him. So mm. I, I can't put you out of something. I didn't put you in. You got to remove yourself out of this. You got to find enough strength to say, you know what, God, I missed it. And it took a lot out of me. It took a lot out of me. But look at you now. Because you, <laughs> you, one thing I've noticed, Sasha, you've been in your bag lately, sis. I'm <laughs> loving it. Like, you know, I follow your social media. I keep up. I'm like, something's going on with her. Something's going on. And normally, like, sometimes when I say something's going on, like, something's going on with them. They need, they need, to, they need some help. No, something's going on with her. She's, she's, She's glowing. She's happy. She's mm-hmm. just in her bag. Like, and I think sometimes we misconstrue like getting in your bag and feeling good about you with like pride. No, it's it's okay to be to to be solid in who you are, who God called Absolutely. you to be, and solid in your joy. Like you're supposed to be happy about yes. being happy. You and and nobody can take credit for this. I it's not it's not because of a man. It's not because and it's, it's I have to say this. this one thing that I, I did that I had never done before after going through this separation and everything that I had never done before was I had given God everything but my body. Mm. 
I never waited to have sex. I had never kept myself. I had never. I was for the streets, baby. I was out here. To, uh, 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 you know what I'm saying? Out here. Yo, let's just give it a fuck. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just glad God allowed me to have two children because I probably should have had 10. <laughs> See, they don't want to talk like this. Sis. They ain't real. It's, they don't it's, tell it's the truth. real. It's real life. It's kept real that life. Room. Shut up for a reason. Mm. <laughs> but I'm just, you know. I'm grateful to God that he's preserved me. I'm grateful to God that I still have something to say. I'm grateful to God that I didn't end up the way people may have thought I should have. Everybody mm -hmm. wasn't rooting for me. You know what I'm saying? I'm, gra mm -hmm. I'm grateful to God that I do have a testimony, that it didn't. I didn't allow it to take me out, that I didn't take my life because I wanted to, You know that I'm not in a men mental institution, yeah. and that I'm not in prison. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All of this stuff is going to play out on the show and you're going to see exactly why I probably could have chose a different route. Mm. Um, but I just thank God because that Holy Spirit is so key because he will whisper, you better not. You better not. Don't say a word. I'm telling you. And you be wanting to. Like my, type and, delete, woo! my type and delete game on, Let me on tell social you something. media. If I get to if, if I get to writing and or speaking, it could be weird. It could be dangerous for other people. So I feel you on that. I feel you on that. Yeah. Whew. Let's talk about this show, okay? And I, I'm gonna keep. I get to keep it. See, I can keep it real with you, okay? So I'm 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 gonna set my opinion to the side just a moment, but I do want to talk about about growing the gospel. But I want to talk about how this came about for you, and mm -hmm. exactly what space and place you were in your life to be able to say, yes. This is not only something I want to do, it's something I have to do. So, um, Elijah Connor, the guy that went Mr. Viral. Stare Down. Yes, Mr. Stare Down. <laughs> That's one of my closest friends. We've been friends since we went to middle school and high school together. Wow. And uh, yeah, he the whole cast is from Detroit. And so he is just I mean, he's the most pettiest person I ever met in my life. He's I told him last night, you're number one on my top five of the pettiest people Ooh. I've he is a handful. You're going, to, you're going to see that, too. He reached out to me um, about doing a show. And I had been approached since this year marks 10 years from me winning Sunday Best. Mm -hmm. so since 2013, I have done two sizzle reels. I've been approached by different companies. And it just wasn't the right fit. It just, yeah. I was like, eh. And then I didn't really feel like I had that much to talk about. I'm mm -hmm. still, I was still building. I mean, it, maybe it would have been quite boring and just see me going from church to church singing. It really wasn't that much going on. This, so that's not boring. You singing <laughs> is never boring, but go ahead. <laughs> so um, at this time in my life, when Elijah came to me about the show, because he knew Carlos King from Carlos casted him to be on the floor, but gotcha. he got cool with Carlos's sister, Jazzy, which they met on a set of Sparkle. So wow. just all the pieces put together. And so when he reached out to me and then I did my interview with Carlos, he was like, now tell me who are some of your friends. So I started so I was saying my friends, he's like, wait, you best friends with Dorinda Clark old daughter? Wait, mm -hmm. you know Fred Hammond daughter? Wait, you know. So the cash just came. The cash, I mean, it just organically just came together out of conversation. So wow. that's how that happened. And I feel like I was in a place where, you know what? We all go on our phones and we pick a picture route that we want to post on social media. We pick the best one with the best lighting, with the best angles. You know, we just skin popping, makeup looking good. And yeah. then we say, oh, I'm posting this. How about I, po I talk about something real? Hmm. That's really happening. Because most of what we see is not real. It's true. You know That's what I'm true. saying? So for a change, let's talk about something real. And it may not shine me in the best light. So what? It's real, though. It's real. And I did that in hopes of someone being able to sit at a TV screen or a computer or a device and identify and say, you know what? Wow. I'm mm. going to keep on living another day because if she can make it, I can make it. And that's simply why. What is the biggest thing that you that you saw about yourself or that you learned along this journey of doing this show that you were most proud of? My courage. It, it takes a lot of courage to get on TV and tell the truth about your life. Yeah. We all know how to stunt. We all know how to put it together. We all know how to be like, oh, yeah, I'm good. What up, though? No, 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 no. no. We, I can do that. Yeah. But to be able to be like, I'm not okay. Huh. I'm not okay. And I feel like going and going. I feel like 
I can't even see that because I, I go there. I, I will I will literally go there. I, I'm to be able to sit in front of a TV screen and, and tell the truth. Yeah. It's not easy because certain certain organizations uh, will make you feel like, OK, don't say too much. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Don't go too far. You're not gonna bring you to the churches. You're not gonna. You're not gonna have. You're gonna have to go back and get a job because they ain't gonna. They ain't gonna call you to sing. Yeah. Why you not gonna call me to come sing? Because I told the truth about my life. We are still a work in progress. I'm. I'm not throwing you under the bus. I'm not telling your business. Yeah. I'm telling the truth about my life, and I still love God. I still pray. I'm still in His face every day. He's leading and guiding me. So why are you so irritated about me telling the truth about my life? So it's just, I, I'm in a place where it's like, I have so much peace and I never realized what real peace was until now. Wow. Real peace is when we say it guards your heart and your mind. Real peace is keeping me from having an emotional reaction to all the foolishness that's happening right now. That's the true. stuff that people are saying about me, the stuff that they're going to talk. So I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. I love it. That's like a the the most fun place to be in. It's like, yes. hey y'all, are you still talking? Okay, let me go over here and still do my thing. Me and the Lord, mm -hmm. we turning up. I don't know what y'all got going on. And and I gotta I gotta admit, when I first saw that this show was coming out, I, I did raise an eyebrow. Mm -hmm. Um, you were one of the only reasons why I'm like, okay, I think I might check it out. I'm just being straight up a deal because and I've I always think I had saw a good... you comment and say something, and I was like, like I wasn't no. upset. I was just like, people have their opinions. It's okay. I, said, I don't know. And the reason why I said that was because we're in a we're in a culture now where sadly some of the worst of what happens in the church mm -hmm. and with believers is exposed. I'm mm -hmm. seeing stuff on social media every day. People taking a piece of a clip of a sermon and posting it. And all of a sudden now the church is, is made a mockery out of. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like, is this another opportunity for a network to take the the authentic transparent good intention of these young people and these adults and put us in a position where the church is looking like a, a bananas in other words again so for me I, I'm just so tired of us looking like a fool because I understand even as we talk now we talk we talk you know when we talk we talk yeah. I know where your heart is I know you're not out here trying to be crazy but I also know as a producer even Reality TV, it, they going to make people look crazy sometimes. So I was kind of on the fence. What say you to people who are on the fence about watching this show um, who say, OK, it's a cool concept, but is it going to make us look as believers look crazy? Because we already out here kind of looking a little a little wayward anyway. Mm -hmm. What would you say to people? Like that? I say this. There is a standard that has to be raised. It has to be kept. You know, being a believer, you have a responsibility in any, I mean, in leadership, period. Yeah. If my mother was, if my mother and father had a big, huge oil company as their child, I would still have a responsibility to uphold and carry myself a certain way. So I don't, I don't defame or, mm -hmm. to my, you know, that that's just, yeah. it is what it is. Um, But life is messy. Life is messy. I can pass the mic around to uh, line up 10 people and pass the mic around and say, tell this room something nobody in here knows about you. Oh, and our mess. jaws would drop. <laughs> oh, my God. You did what? You Girl, said what? You this can pass the mic to me. What? It's crazy. And guess how much healing would come out of that? That's the thing. Yeah. And, and what people have to understand is healing is messy. It is. Healing is really messy. I just decided to show it. I decided, you know what? I want to I, I want to take the power back. I've mm -hmm. given my power away to so many people. I gave my power away to the uncle that molested me. I gave my power away to the five men that gang raped me. I gave mm -hmm. my, po my power away to the husbands that didn't treat me like a queen. I gave my power away... I gave it away. Gave it away. Gave it away. By not speaking up. By stunning my growth. By not... Uh, tapping into the power that's inside of me, not by not who, knowing who I am, by dumbing myself down, you know, by not walking in true uh, confidence of I'm a woman of God. 
I am a queen. I got to carry myself a certain way. I gave my power away to so many people. And this is my way of taking my power back and saying, you know what? I'm. It's not breaking news if I say it first. So mm. we teach me the opportunity to break my own news. So you're going to hear from me, but you're going to, of course, we got to be entertaining. You don't want to watch boring TV. Girl, you're entertaining anyway. <laughs> y'all don't even want y'all pastors to be boring on Sunday. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Because he got to keep your attention span. That's two seconds. So he got to do illustrated sermons. Y'all got pastors rolling, walking in, riding in on donkeys for Easter. Y'all got these people doing, coming, uh, hanging from stuff from the sky. Cirque, Cirque de Soleil, what it's called. Cirque de Soleil. Y'all got these preachers doing all this stuff just to keep your attention. That's true. Because we want to be entertained. So we're going to give y'all that. You know what I mean? Life is yeah. messy. So it's going to be a little drama. It's gonna, When you get six people that group up together that really know each other for real, somebody going to get into it. Absolutely. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you're going to see God in this. You're going to see every individual story. And it's brilliant. It's fascinating. You got the daughter of Dorinda Clark Cole from the legendary Clark sisters. Legend. Nikki. You got the, the infamous stare down king, <laughs> Elijah Connor, who's the cousin of Prince. Who wow. lived in Jamaica, whose mother is a preacher, his father, whose father is a preacher. He's a PK, but he chose to sing R&B music coming from the church. You got my brother, Justin Brooks, whose father is one of the founding members of Commission, wrote 80 percent of their hits, who wrote the soundtrack for all of our R&B groups right now. Fred Hammond's daughter, Mr. No Weapon himself, <laughs> Brianne Hammond, that people didn't even know he had a daughter. Mm. Now, I didn't know. that's going to come out on the show. All of that, all of those dynamics, all of those dynamics are coming. And we have a right to tell our stories. Yeah. While still at the same time honoring where we come from. You get what I'm saying? Like my mom is in some of the episodes. Dorinda, Auntie Dorinda, she's in some of the episodes. Our family, they gave us the green light to do this. This is not a tell-all. This is not a bash our families. This is a collaborative effort of y'all grown now, which is Grown in gospel. Tell the good news. Mm. Tell the good news. Share your stories. Y'all went through a lot. And a lot mm. that y'all went through was as a result because we were gone on the road. Mm. Things happen to us. So it, you just got to watch. You just got to watch the show. That's the best pitch I think somebody's given me in months. <laughs> now I'm like, okay, let me go. I'm going to watch it. Like I told you, you were my reason for saying, okay, I'm just going to check it out. Cause I got love for Tasha. I'm gonna check it out, and and I'm thinking about Women's Month and all that you've shared so far. And fellas, yes, y'all y'all need to watch the show too. Don't get it twisted. But I do want to ask you, considering your story, considering that it's Women's Month, two things: what do you want women, black women in particular, to walk away with when they see you in your element in this show and sharing your story? And also, what do you want men to understand about the heart of the black woman, the heart condition of the black woman? No woman wakes up and says, I'm going to cheat on my husband today. <laughs> no woman wakes up and says, as soon as he wakes up, I'm going to talk to him like a dog. I'm going a, I'm a I'm, I'm to intentionally just mistreat him. I'm going to emasculate him. No mm -hmm. woman does that. A woman is pushed to that point. And it could be from her upbringing. It could be from how she was raised. Or it could be from how you did her. And what I want men to understand is, the Bible doesn't tell a woman to love your husband as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. It, But it does say that to a man. Mm -hmm. And that's, that, that has to be significant. You got to see the significance of that. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. The ultimate sacrifice is that that's how you're supposed to treat that woman. Also, the Bible says that if you dishonor this woman, that your prayers will be hindered. That's how important this woman is to you. But you got to see it. And then I want women to understand is that tap into your power that's inside of you. You have so much power in you. You can shift atmospheres. You can. I don't care what's going on in your household. You can walk in your house and you can shift that whole atmosphere where everything yes. got to come subject to the spirit of God that's down inside of you. But we're so ruled by our emotions. Because mm -hmm. women are receivers. We're intakers. Yes. So it just knocks us off our rock. I can't believe he said this to me. I can't believe he did this to me. I can't believe I caught him doing this. He did it. We're so caught up on him, 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 yes. what he didn't do, or what he. 
Shut all that down. Quiet, silence is so powerful. Silence is powerful. And getting in the face of God and talking to the one person that can change the heart of that man. It's, mm. If I would have known now, known back then, what I know now, things probably would have turned out a lot different. But because they didn't, now look at you. Now you got to roll with the punches. You got to make them, you got to, you got to make the best out of it. That's Romans 8, 28. All things yeah, work together things. for the good. So God, look, think about how God, God does. Every mistake that you could ever make, he's already, grace has already accounted for it. Yes. So he already calculated, this is the God that knows all. He knew you was going to mess up. He knew I was going to get divorced twice. He knew I was going to, he knew I was stubborn. He knew I wanted things my way. He knew I couldn't wait. He knew, he had, so, okay. She just got to be with somebody. She just got to have a warm bed, warm body in the bed. Mm. She just can't keep her legs closed. I mean, just, this, this real. Yeah. She just can't, she just can't, she just can't. Okay, you got to suffer. Mm. Better suffer. But I'm going to be with you every step of the way. And when you come out of this suffering, this is the last time you're going to suffer from that. Because now you learn from it. And now I can stand in front of a group of women and, tell, and, and talk like I'm talking now. I know my words are powerful. I feel the spirit of God while I'm talking right now. Mm -hmm. This is real for me. So I'm in a place now where I can be effective and I'm not bleeding all over people. Mm. So that's what means so much to me is that this ain't a facade. This is real. This is like absolutely 1000% real. I'm free for real. <laughs> I love God for real. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I'm not going to let nobody walk over me. I'm not going to let nobody talk to me any kind of way. So whoever, I mean, whoever's next, you <laughs> don't have to. <laughs> let me stop. Let me stop. I don't want to get in trouble. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in a good place. I'm in a happy place. And um, I just want to say this last thing too. Yeah. I heard a lot of people saying like this is going to set the church back and it's let me let me put it to you like this. When you see God for who he is and how powerful and mega and massive and amazing you talking about the El Elyon, the almighty yeah. God, all of his sovereignty and all his his divinity and all the God that put the sun to shine by day and then the moon to shine by night and put the stars in their place. That God yeah, you can't set him back. It's not my church. It's mm. the Lord's church. It's not your favorite pastor's church. It's not T.D. Jake's church. It's the Lord's church. It's not Joe Osteen's church. <laughs> right. It's right. the Lord's church. It can't be set back. His agenda will be er forever pushing forward. And it's always somebody who's in the wings waiting to say yes to God, to do what you don't have enough courage to do, to do what you don't have enough discipline to do. So you, this can't set the church back. So you people can have their opinions. All I'm saying is just give it a chance. Watch the first chance. episode. I'm going to give it a chance, y'all. Everybody listening. I'm going to give it a chance. I'm I'm actually more excited to see it now than I was before we talked. Mm -hmm. And see, so you got my number. So you could call me and be like, Tosh, now wait I'm a minute. I'm definitely going to be texting them. Sis, what yeah. Oh, you snap yeah. right there. Mm -hmm. I think it's just... It's important, like you continue to say, to see the real of who people are. Um, and I think, sadly, in the body of Christ, we have not shown the the real and been authentic enough. Over, Like you said, you have parents that's not sharing different things that they've battled with with their own children. So when you present this facade and you're walking around with imposter syndrome, these type of things now get scrutinized. Yeah. When in, when, when in all reality, the honesty and authenticity needs to be at the forefront regardless. So and then I think this, this Bible, sorry to cut you off, this Bible that we read, which is supposed to be the blueprint of our lives, what is the Bible about? The Bible is about a whole bunch of messed up Man, people. Man, the people are. God still you in love. Yes. What yes. has changed? Nothing. Think about Nothing. this. Those people that were in the Bible, David didn't know they was writing a book about him. They didn't need to know that one day we was going to be sitting reading on our phones and say, oh, creating me a clean heart. Oh, my God. He didn't know for thousands of years people was going to be reciting things he just was saying to God. Yeah. So what if somebody was putting you in the Bible? What would they say about you? What would people read about you 2,000 years from now? Mm. 
Hopefully they will say about me, yeah, she was messed up. She 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 was a drug addict at one time. She she was molested. She was raped. She was married twice. She did. She messed up. She was an adulterer. She lied. She cheated. She did all of this stuff. But guess what she did? Won a massive amount of souls to Christ because of her realness and her transparency. So at some point, she got it right. Mm. Y'all gonna see Tasha get it right on Girl on the Gospel Thursday nights, 9 p.m., I am excited. Ooh, you just got me super excited. I got to set the DVR. Listen, I'm trying to tell you. She just, look, y'all, I'm serious, y'all. Tasha made me a believer. She knows. She saw my little comment on social media. It was, it was, it was G-rated, but it it was definitely, I don't know about this, but. But I know you, so I knew it was real. I was like, okay, she ain't feeling it. And it's okay. We're going to talk about it. I'm excited to talk to you about it. And before I let you go, new music, I know that's something that you're working on as well. And yeah. I'm excited to hear it because we're, we're now getting the vantage point from you, from somebody who's healed on this healing journey, you know, delve through all the brokenness and just in our bag. Like I'm excited. So for you, what is that? What can we expect from you sound wise, style wise with this new project? You're going to get the record. You should have got right after Sunday best. Whoa. Cause wait a minute. Cause that record up Sunday best was lit though. I got to admit. It was. Oh, you, okay. But that was a Kirk Franklin record. Facts. Facts. So, you know, you're going to get a Tasha Page Lockhart record. I'm excited. It's a song on there called On the Other Side. And it says, I'm hearing all this talk of victory. Everyone's claiming victory, but I want to see it. I'm ready to see it. What's on the other side? 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 Oh, I want to see it. Oh, I'm ready to see it. What's on the other side? That's what this record is about. No more singing songs about victory. No more talking about victory. No more talking about it like it's just a lost thing and it's so yeah. far away in your distant future. No, you can have victory today, right yeah. now, but you gotta put in the work. It's gonna, it's gonna pull something out of you. It's gonna stretch you. You're gonna have a lot of nights where you're gonna cry. It's gonna be uncertainty. It's gonna, it's, it's, it's unfamiliar territory. But trusting God and knowing that He's not gonna leave you, He got your back, and you got people like me and my sister right here that's rooting for you and that's praying for you, you're gonna make it. That's Woo. what this is about. When is it coming out? Because I'm I'm ready right now. We're looking at second quarter. We're still in the editing process. The the okay. music is finished. We're just Great. doing some last minute edits, working on visuals, you know, getting everything together. I had to take some time off to work on certain projects. So now I'm focused on the music. The show is done. We're promoting the show. We did the Christmas movie with yep. Kirk Franklin last year. So it's like I got to move from project to project. So now I'm zeroed in on the music. So we're getting it, we're getting it ready for you. Okay, and any more acting in the future? So, uh, ahead absolutely. <laughs> I think you're great. I say go for the gold, go for the gusto. Just keep I us posted. Get my Oscar speech together now. You better do it. I'm with you on that, Tasha. I'm I saying this you. the first. This is the first public platform that I'm saying this on, and I'm 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 saying this on your show. I'm I'm going to be an EGOT member. Come on in. That's that's my goal. That's my goal. Family. I'm going to be an EGOT family. member. A lot of people don't know what it is. If you don't know what it is, that means that you have an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. And I'm going to join the group of amazing African-American women and men mm -hmm. that have been able to reach that status, along with Jennifer Hudson, Quincy Jones, John Legend, and now Viola Davis, yes. Whoopi Goldberg. Oh, I do my research now. Trust Come me. On. I got my eyes on where I want to go. And um, it's going to happen. And it's on the other side. Absolutely. Ooh, love it. Tasha, I love you, sis. I appreciate you. I want to make sure that people can keep up with you on social media as well. So how can they do that? Tasha Page Lockhart on Instagram. Um, Tasha Lockhart on Twitter. And if you want to bring me to your church to talk or sing, because I got something to say now. Um, it's book Tasha at TPLministries.com. I love it, y'all. Grown and Gospel, We TV, Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern. Please do yourself a favor, check it out. And uh, I'm so excited, Tasha. I thank you for this time. This has blessed me. You do not even know. And I know we got more to talk about soon. So I appreciate yeah. you and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Love you so much. Thank love you. you it's just a thought. It's just a thought. It's my opinion. It's just a thought. It's just a thought. Get out your feelings. It's just a thought. It's just a thought. It's